What's going on people? Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you had a wonderful new year. Today's video is going to be sponsored by Life is Feudal, a game that I haven't played in such a long time, but when I did was always such a breath of fresh air. So much has happened in this past month and a half that has changed my life and it made me realize that I really wanted to get back to my roots and start covering games that I've enjoyed in the past alongside recent releases and upcoming games that'll be coming in the future, all or most within the theme of medieval or fantasy of course. Life is Feudal is one that I really enjoyed and was one of my favorites across my entire time on YouTube. This game is one that I compare to being a more modern version of a game called Worm Online if you're familiar with it. And essentially it's a sandbox with unlimited freedom, probably one of the most freeform ones you'll come across. Almost no limitations to PvP, a huge open world. It contains over 37 massive regions across a 21 km by 21 km space. Thousands of players are capable of being constantly online and playing at the same time. And it provides high levels of realism and survival, crafting, and combat mechanics. The combat is more directional based like Mountain Blade. So if if you're familiar with that game, you'll have a head start coming in. Each player can decide to play solo in a guild or small group and be able to find success in whatever you'd like to do. I would say that it's one that is more recommended to play in a group. You kind of have to specialize. You do have a limited number of skill points, so you won't be able to specialize into everything unless they've changed anything since I last played. So you'll want to group up with other players if you can to synergize with them or at least live near other settlements that you can kind of work with. But you'll always have to be careful because like I said, when it comes to PvP, there's almost no limitation when it comes to that. Life is Feudal, the MMO, has an advanced economy system. It's a very hardcore game where survival alone is difficult, but still doable. Each character has their own different specializations when it comes to crafting and gathering and war. By default in this new version, it's said that the developers will automatically put you in one of the game's guilds where you can cooperate with other players. Just to kind of give you a head start as far as being able to create new ones after that, I haven't tried that per se yet in the new version, but that's probably possible. In this new version, there are two daily time periods. So there's peacetime and wartime. So although that means that there's no limitations when it comes to the war cycle in PvP, you won't have to deal with it all the time. During the peacetime, you and other players can explore the world, collect resources, craft equipment, whatever you want. And then during the hour of war, you can switch to your combat professions to fight with other players from other guilds and siege towns, etc. There's also no pay to win features in this new version, which is always a plus. They do have a pay to play subscription, but that also allows them to make sure that there are no pay to win mechanics, such as paid boosters, premium store, or even skins, that sort of thing. And one of the highlights that I really want to focus on when it comes to this game is that everything you see is player built. So, and not just player built, but even the terrain, because there is terraforming, all of that's player done. You have to flatten this land, lower it, raise it, everything you see in these sections, uh, like for my old gameplay when I first started making videos on the official release. This was all created by players and it can take quite a bit of time. You won't be able to do everything in one day, especially if you're playing only in a small group or by yourself. It's going to take you quite a bit of time. And like I said, with the wartime, if it's possible to siege, I haven't tried it yet, but I would assume so. You have to be aware of that and potentially ready to defend your base should the opportunity present itself. Life is Feudal, in my opinion, has one of the best life skilling systems in any game that I've ever played. When I used to play Play it, I was an avid blacksmith, actually so much so to the point that I didn't even really mess with the combat system that much. I strictly did the blacksmith thing, mining, construction, stuff of that nature, but I fell in love with the life skilling system. You may notice as well that every action that you do has a timer. It's not something that's instantaneous, so that's something to be aware of. It may take like three seconds to open a box or hammer out an item, that sort of thing. And if you're making multiple items, you'll probably notice very quickly that it's something that could take a little bit more time than it would in other games. Of course, there's also also benefits to this, you're able to actually queue up multiple actions. So if you're gathering herbs or mining, for example, you can continually um, select the option and then you'll be able to queue it up about three, three ish times unless it's been changed. And that'll give you the opportunity to kind of take a sip of water or watch a video in the background, just kind of relax. It's a very relaxing game on top of everything that I've said. So there is that benefit there. Cycling over to the new versions footage, you'll see me running through these different towns because I wanted to explore um, everything that was around. This character is one that's kind of fresh out of this tutorial so it's not that advanced quite yet. I was able to notice that a lot of these settlements are all kind of bunched together. I'm not sure exactly if this is just the starting zone but I believe it is and then like I said you'll have about 37 different regions that you can explore so when you and your group do get in you can kind of pick wherever you want on the map and as long as it's not already taken you'll likely be able to move in there and be able to do and construct.
construct whatever you'd like. Like I said, the terraforming is a big part of this game. When it comes to the freedom that you have with this system, you can do anything from building giant moats to creating entire raised flat hills to put your castle on top of. As far as terraforming mountainous terrain, I don't fully remember if I ever came across that. Uh, I know I for sure did in Worm Online, but as far as Life is Computal is concerned, I'm not 100% sure if that is possible, but I feel like it might be. And as for the professions themselves, on the crafting side, you've got ones like artisan, mining, forestry, kilning, household, gathering, hunting, construction, material processing, carpentry, foraging, farming, herbalism, procreation, masonry, precious prospecting, bow crafting, weaponsmithing, cooking, healing, animal lore, which by the way, you will be able to tame and breed animals, architecture, jewelry, warfare, engineering, armorsmithing, tailoring, alchemy, and warhorse training. And then for the combat skills, you've got cavalry, militia, footman, slinger, assaulter, knight, spearman, swordsman, archer, vanguard, lancer, guard, huskarl, and ranger and berserker. And these also have their own pathways. So you go from like militia to spearman to guard, and then footman to swordsman to huskarl. And it's kind of the same with the crafting skills. Like you have to level up the baseline mining to get to the material processing and then precious prospecting and so on. Some other baseline things that you'll want to know is there is an attribute system with Life is Feudal. When you're creating your character, the race that you pick does have an influence on this. The stats that you'll see available in the game are strength, agility, constitution, intelligence, and willpower. You'll also notice that there is a hunger system. It kind of ties into your stamina regeneration, but if it reaches zero, it's also going to start draining your uh, soft HP or regular HP rather, and then it's going to result in fainting and death eventually. Some cool things to cover on the cooking and herbalism system is there's a full-fledged system for both. But there's a lot of different types of food that you can utilize, cooking ingredients and a full-fledged process for that, and herbalism and alchemy side, same thing. And then for the combat, there is actually unit formations, which I never got to participate in that I did see in some of the PvP videos, which was really cool, and I highly recommend checking those out. And they do actually offer bonuses if all the players do stand in those formations to activate them. And there is an alignment system, so it's not like even though you know there is a, a wartime and peacetime that you can just go around killing people willy-nilly and not get any penalties. If you repeatedly kill people, it will start to bring down your alignment um, down to a, a maximum of negative 1,000, I believe, and you have a maximum of 1,000 positive to go for. An alignment effect the amount of skill points you lose in death so if you're down towards like negative 1000 and you go down you're probably going to lose quite a bit and then you'll have to regain those by training your skills back up again alignment also raises quite slowly but it drops very quickly and you can't gain alignment from killing low alignment players so the only way that you can really increase it again is by praising your god if it's similar to the old system where once per in-game day or night which this might not be the same but you can activate that to increase your alignment by a little bit and then decreasing it is just basically performing criminal acts like killing people as far as traveling goes you're able to do so by foot by horse by swimming and i believe one other method but those are the main ones that i've come across so far when you're crafting items like weapons and armor for example they do have a quality system tied into them so for example a level one blacksmith like i was when i started originally is not going to make the same type of iron sword or well any iron sword for that matter but the same type of iron sword as like a master blacksmith was which i was towards the end so that will affect multiple things like the damage the durability and so on there's quite a few different buildings that you have access to and fortifications i haven't yet been able to participate in a pvp fight honestly i haven't been able to do a whole lot of testing in general but what i will say from previous versions and checking out some of the showcase footage that they provided me with is that it still as intense as i remember when these battles get really big and that's kind of a baseline gist of what you'll get out of life is futile i was so sad when i saw that this game was shutting down originally i had so many good memories from playing in this one and it made me super happy to see that someone was able to pick it back up and re-release it i highly recommend checking it out at some point if you haven't already i think it's worth at least one try i'll leave a link in the description below and as always thank you guys so much again for watching i hope you have a great rest of your week again i hope this is going to be a happy new year to you all and i'll catch you next time